Hello and welcome to Lessons in Leadership. I'm Shireen Bhan and my guest today has made his purpose democratizing entertainment. Reed Hastings, the founder of Netflix, here with us on the program. Thanks very much for joining us on the show. As I said, democratizing entertainment, that's what Netflix is all about. Uh, you started as a DVD shipment company. You started as a US-only company. And today, what, you're across 130 countries. Uh, and the international part of your business is growing at a very, very fast clip. India priority market. Take me through the journey so far. Well, it sounds like you've got it all, <laughs> Shereen, there. Thank you for having me today. It's a treat to be here in Mumbai. And yes, we're continuing um, to invest uh, here in India and continuing to grow. Uh, Netflix just makes TV watching so easy because mm. it's on the internet. You get to pick you what shows you want to watch. You get to stop and pause them. And they're just... Uh, That's such not entirely true. You don't get to stop and pause. I mean, what, what is binge watching and binge racing about then? <clears throat> I mean, you, you've you taken control, right? <laughs> you know, binge watching is a funny story because um, the term comes up of being able to watch a series all night long. Yeah. Um, and when it first came up, we tried to suppress it mm. because uh, binge was sort of too dark. And, and we tried to get people to say feast viewing or something, uh, you know, very nice sounding. And of course, nobody liked that. They liked the darkness and binge viewing became an epic term mm. despite our best efforts. And public binging in India, I believe, after Mexico, India ranks number two on the Netflix survey uh, on public binging, right? That's right. Public binging is watching on your mobile, um, you know, on the buses, on in the train, taxis, on the, on the train. Um, and so it's got its own certain protocol of what you show and what you don't. So 1997, let me take you back. Uh, Apollo 13, your VHS goes missing, $40 rental uh, cancellation or late fee or whatever that's the right. case may be. You didn't want to tell your wife about that. And that's how the Netflix idea came about. Did you ever imagine that you'd be sitting in Mumbai today, you'd be talking about having 55 million international customers? Not in my wildest dreams. Um, when we started, it was all DVD by post. And for the first five years, it wasn't clear that we were going to survive. We were competing with Blockbuster, um, trying to rent DVDs. It took you four years to make money? To, of course, at least four years, yeah, until 2003. Um, so that was, those were very challenging years, fun in their way, but challenging. Uh, and then we started in streaming in 2007, in international in 2010. Uh, and now we're really focused on the expanding uh, original content, mm. like this great new series, Sacred Games, that we're producing here in India. So, you know, if it is now going to be all about original content and uh, localization, so to speak, is going to be your way to grow markets like India, uh, what more can we expect? I mean, an $8 billion budget to create content, I believe that's, that's, that's right. the latest number that you're working with. So give me a sense of what we can expect for priority markets like India. Well, of course, there's the global shows we have, like Narcos, uh, filmed in Colombia, popular all around the world. We've got a new German original Dark. We've got The Crown coming in just another month. Mm -hmm. um, that's Queen Elizabeth and one of the most expensive and elaborate productions ever. We've got Stranger Things, 13 Reasons Why. And then we're adding more and more Bollywood films, and then we're adding uh, also sacred games and originals that we're doing um, here in India. So outside of content for India, uh, what can we expect in terms of investments? Because, you know, connectivity is an issue here in India. Low bandwidth is a problem that you're having to deal with, not just in markets like India, but I would imagine other emerging markets uh, that you're operating in. So what more can we expect on being able to grapple with those challenges? You know, we launched in Mexico five years ago, um, which had a relatively slow internet. And it's just accelerated tremendously um, because people want to watch Netflix, YouTube, other, uh, other content sources mm. online, and it's moving to the internet life. And now we see in India, of course, the last two years with Reliance Geo, just the, the biggest explosion in bandwidth that the world's ever seen. I mean, it's just incredible what's mm. happening here in India. And so now uh, we're trying to, as we go to other countries, saying, hey, uh, an investment like Reliance Geo is transformative for the society. It's just so impressive. Mm. So what, uh, you know, what's unique about India? You're operating across, as I pointed out, 130 mm. different countries. We've established the fact that Indians are public binging. Uh, they're yeah. also probably watching much more on their laptops and mobile phones as opposed to uh, television screens. What else is unique about the Indian market from a Netflix perspective? 
wow, to have a billion people who love television. That, of I course. Mean, people that are, of are course. <laughs> wild about entertainment and television. Um, so that's what's so exciting. And, you know, we're still just a very young player. We've only been two years here. Um, but we're going to be doing more and more new shows and new movies, not only for the Indian market, but also for the whole world. So we want to take some of the best of Indian cultural content. So what's the plan as far as the original content from India for India or maybe from India for the rest of the world is concerned? Well, we've got some great series that we've commissioned, like Sacred Games, that'll be coming out in 2018. And in fact, now we're working with Red Chili's Entertainment with Shah Rukh Khan for he's trying to expand into television. Mm -hmm. um, and so Bar to Blood is a great new book written by a 19-year-old that's been all the rage. Uh, and so we're together working to put that into a series. Mm -hmm. um, so very exciting to be announcing that. You know, you don't specifically talk about individual markets, but in terms of investing in content from India for the rest of the world, give me just a sense of, of what we should expect realistically now that you've gotten it started. Yeah, we well, should expect a rapid increase. Um, dozens of series uh, a year from now will be underway. Um, so we're making great progress on that. Okay. Uh, and uh, do you believe that, you know, geography Clearly, I mean, if you if you look at the Netflix example, uh, it's become sort of boundaryless. Content is, in that sense, become boundaryless. Do you see uh, local content from India being able to connect with viewers outside of markets like India, for instance? Well, absolutely, and, and content is best when it really has a local flavor, mm -hmm. uh, but then it's uh, approachable by other people. So Narcos is an example uh, of a tale that's really in Latin America, but audiences around the world have really enjoyed it. Uh, we've got an American comedian, Hassan Minaj, um, does stand-up in California, and he's popular all over the world now on the Netflix platform. So, uh, you know, you get all these interesting crossovers. Mm -hmm. uh just, you know, speaking of, uh, of maybe it could be a concern or a challenge or even an opportunity, but with, with the likes of Disney now saying that, look, we're going to come off the platform, uh, what does that mean for somebody like you? No, it means we're shaking things up. <laughs> we're having some fun. We're doing our own content. And so the existing media companies aren't quite sure what to make of us. Mm. Um, but our content just keeps improving. So what would the strategy be to combat something like that then? to be producing more original movies and more original series. Okay. Uh, outside of India, what next as far as Netflix is concerned? I mean, you've always been a believer in focusing on the niches because that's where you make money. So if sport is not the way to go as far as Netflix is concerned, what next then? Well, we want to do so many great television shows and movies that everyone's just watching our shows, talking about them, that you get that big cultural conversation. Mm. And, you know, we've got a long How way to go. How much of your own stuff do you watch? Oh, I try to watch a Are little a bit of everything. Are you a binge racer or a binge watcher? No, I'm a, I'm a saverer. Um, <laughs> you know, those people who, when I find a show that I love, then it's like I'll, I'll watch two episodes and stop so I have something the next night. Okay. So uh, the other interesting thing that I think we've noticed is how you're relying on smart data to actually be able to customize your content. How is that working for you? Well, it's very well when you look at the growth that the companies enjoyed. You know, we're now over 110 million members globally, mm -hmm. and that's because we're producing content that people are excited about. And some of that is that whole feedback loop of seeing what content is popular for which people, using the AI to help us figure out what areas we should be doing more in. Mm -hmm. But how much of... of uh, and I, I can't remember whether it was Simon Sinek who, who was talking about this or somebody else about how House of Cards and the other show that Amazon was doing, which was pretty similar, relied on uh, data. But eventually, the results of how it worked with the audience was very, very different. So how do you make use of the feedback that you're getting from consumer groups or whatever else it is? But how much of it is still driven by intuition, by your creative instinct? So we call it informed intuition. So we want the creatives to have a lot of data to help them think about things. But ultimately, it's a judgment call of a human being with a creative vision. Mm. And that's the intuition. And the intuition is the most important part. But we'd like it to be informed by, say, how other shows have done. So uh, what, what drives you today? I mean, you know, you've created this global conglomerate now, if I could call it that, with operations across 100 different countries. What continues to excite you about Netflix? 
You don't have an office. Uh, you haven't had one since, what, 2008, I believe. So, that's right. I have, so, I have so, a laptop. That's, yeah, that's my office. So how, how uh, does it work for you? You know, what excites me is traveling around the world and seeing people sharing ideas, shows. Um, there's so much power to entertainment. And to see some of our shows, like Stranger Things, being so popular in Africa and in India, um, in, in Europe, also the US. It's an incredible thing to see. Mm. And so it's about bringing the world together because we're all sharing some of the same shows and their expressions from, from, I mean, if you look at Narcos, if you look at some of our other shows, we have a show we produced in Brazil, 3%. Um, it's about you compete to be in the elite. Mm. So it's a fair starting place, the ultimate meritocracy. Um, and it's this great show that that's really caught on with all Brazil Brazilian actors and so that's an example of what we're trying to do produce around the world and share to the whole world.